Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Motorola Moto X4 Android One Edition smartphone. It's a mid-range phone from Motorola, and this is the Android One Edition version of that phone, which means that it comes with near-stock Android software, guaranteed security updates every month, and software updates to the next version of Android uh, for a set period of time. This version was loaned to me by the folks at Google who are selling the phone through their Project Fi network for about $400. And it's overall a pretty nice device. And I want to show you some of the features and uh, talk a little bit about this phone. So as I mentioned, it's running near stock software. This is not actually the Pixel launcher, even though it looks very similar to what you get on a Pixel phone. It is a Motorola app launcher. Functionally, it's pretty much the same, but there are a couple of extra features here. For instance, there's Moto Display, which enables a night mode uh, that'll eliminate blue light at nighttime, and there's a Moto Display option that'll uh, allow, when the screen is off, for notifications to bring the screen to life briefly. Those are features that you find on a lot of other phones, but in here, they're the Motorola versions of those features. Moto Actions also include a bunch of gestures that are kind of nice to have. For instance, use three fingers pressed on the screen to uh, take a screenshot. Use a sort of double chop to turn the flashlight on and off or double twist to open the camera. Again, some of these features are available on other phones, but this is Motorola's implementation. And the camera is the other thing that's actually really pretty interesting here because we've got a dual camera system here on the back with a 12 megapixel sensor and an eight megapixel wide angle lens. And that dual camera setup is one of the reasons for this custom application because Google's stock Android camera app doesn't have support for dual cameras right now. So you can switch between wide angle and normal lenses, uh, which is kind of a nice feature to have if you want to be able to fit a little bit more into the frame. And you also have support for depth effects of various sorts. So let's go ahead and put a couple of different things in the picture. And I'm going to go ahead and enable depth. And we're going to say focus on the front. And you can see the back sort of blurs. And you can adjust how much it's going to blur. And then take your picture. Uh, this is not the best example, but you can find some camera samples at lilliputing.com. I find it works better with people, pets, uh, different sorts of objects. This is just sort of a quick demonstration of the camera features on video. There's also a really nice uh, tool here for uh, color picking, which I think is kind of neat. Um, it can be difficult to work with, but under certain circumstances, you can take all the color other than the selected color and make it go black and white. So there's a full color version. There's a black and white version, and let's go ahead and snap that picture. In terms of general image quality, it's decent. Um, you can get some good shots, but it's not great at low light conditions. It's not great with high motion photos. And so in a lot of ways, I think of this phone as a replacement for Motorola's or for, uh, for LG's Nexus 5X, which was available on Google's Project Fi uh, and uh, Nexus program couple of years ago, sold for $400 in 2015 versus $400 now. And in almost every way, the Moto X4 feels like an upgrade, kind of like the camera better on the Nexus 5X. So while I get better battery life, better performance, better everything else, I got uh, a better camera, I think, on the Nexus 5X, which makes it kind of hard for me to consider upgrading to this newer phone. But in terms of battery life, it easily makes it through a whole day. Um, and uh, I've, I've got a little bit more of a rundown of that on the website, but uh, I've gone 16, 17, 18 hours, used the screen for about three hours out of that, and still had 40% at the end of the day. Uh, rundown time during standby is even better. So if you don't use the phone that much during the day, you could probably get a day and a half or so out of it. I think that it runs really nicely in terms of battery life. Um, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 630 octa-core processor, four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and an SD card slot. It's got a five inch uh, or 5.2 inch 1920 by 1080 pixel display, which I think looks pretty good. It does have a lot of bezels. Uh, if you're one of those people who absolutely hates screen bezels, this phone isn't necessarily gonna be the best phone for you, but I don't think it's a bad looking device. It has glass on the front and the back, so you might wanna get a case if you're worried about scratching it. Uh, or dropping it and, and breaking it. I've been using this phone for a couple of weeks at this point, and I don't see any visible scratches. Fingerprints, yes. Uh, scratches, no. And fingerprints, you can wipe out. It's got a USB Type-C port and a an, uh, headset jack down here at the bottom. And nothing on the sides, nothing on the top, really, except for the SIM card and micro SD card slot. And we've got uh, volume and power button. Power button is a little bit ridged so that it's fairly easy to feel without looking. There's a single uh, 
speaker here on the front, which is fairly loud, uh, definitely louder than on the Nexus 5X. We've got a selfie camera with a front-facing flash and a fingerprint sensor on the front, which you can use both to turn the phone on and to turn it off and to uh, unlock apps, of course. Uh, generally speaking, I kind of still like having a fingerprint sensor on the back so you can pick up the phone and unlock it just like that. But I've gotten pretty used to being able to do that with the front, especially because it's nice to have when it's down on the table. So, so again, overall, I do feel like this is a pretty nice phone and I'm tempted to upgrade from my Nexus 5X, but um, the camera performance might be holding me back a little bit. But overall, I, you know, if you, if you don't have a camera that you really need to hold on to, if you're looking for a phone with decent battery life, decent performance, um, overall, I think it's a, it's a pretty nice phone. Uh, show you a little bit of gaming performance. This is not a high-end game or anything. And in terms of benchmarks, I mean, if you compare what you get on this phone to what you get with something with a Snapdragon 820 or 835, it's not nearly as fast. But it handles multitasking nicely, uh, has plenty of RAM, as I mentioned. And graphics look pretty good, I think, although it's a little hard to see in this light, I realize. The, uh, the SD card, I should probably point out, is not available, at least out of the box, as adoptable storage. So you've got 32 gigabytes of built-in storage that you can use for apps and games and media and whatnot. And you can easily load music, movies, other content to the SD card. Um, and you can set up certain things. So, for instance, that uh, camera photos and videos will be saved automatically to the SD card. But it won't be treated like internal storage. So that's not a feature that you're going to get here. Um, the phone ships with Android 7.1. It's going to be available, uh, or an Android 8.0 update should be available by the end of 2017. And, uh, and overall, as I mentioned, it's, it's a pretty nice phone. I think it looks nice if you don't uh, mind the bezels. Um, it does have a camera bump, but it's sort of an aesthetically interesting one, I'd say. And uh, it's fairly thin, it's light, it feels good in the hand, it multitasks well. So I think the phone's, you know, not bad for $400. Uh, at a time when a lot of flagship phones are going for $800 or more, it's nice to have good options in the $400 range. If you don't want to spend $650 or more on the latest Pixel, this is definitely an option. Now for $550, you can get the first generation Pixel, which does have a better camera, does have a faster processor, doesn't have an SD card slot. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some other sort of trade-offs, I suppose. And it's a Pixel device that's a 2016 model, which means that it'll be supported for a while. Um, but in a lot of ways, the Android One program is kind of like the successor, I think, to the Nexus program in that it's a third-party phone with third-party support, but it's, uh, it's going to get regular software updates for a set period of time, 18 to 24 uh, months, I think, depending on the, the phone. Uh, I should also probably point out that it does come with this rapid charger, uh, relatively compact, like most phone chargers, USB, Type-C, and, uh, and it does charge the phone pretty quickly. So overall, uh, as I mentioned, it's a winner, and I'm sorely tempted to upgrade for the better battery life and better performance. I just wish it had a slightly better camera. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. You can find, again, more samples of photo, video, uh, and other details at lilliputing.com. And you can check out a comparison video on YouTube between the Nexus 5X and the Moto X4 Android One Edition.